Hello there! Well, this is my first RPG Maker related tutorial, and this will be about uh, making a car chase scene in the RPG Maker. I was asked quite a lot of times about uh, the car chase that uh, I had in one of my games, Incitement, and so I thought, why not make a tutorial about it? It'll be a good idea. So, if you have played Incitement before, or if you've simply seen a video clip which I put on YouTube with that scene in it, and you're interested to know how I've done it, then um, keep watching. Alright, for, so for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna do it all in a, like a blank project, so completely new, and uh, I'll guide you each step of the way. There's three main things really to keep in mind. First of all is getting into a vehicle, and getting into a car. Second, doing of the enemies that you're gonna encounter, and third is getting out of the car. So the first part is getting into a car, to, to make your character a car. The first thing you should do is get yourself a car graphic or whichever ve vehicle you want to use. It doesn't necessarily have to be a car, it could be any vehicle really of your choice, depending on your game. So in this tutorial I'm going to be using a car graphic that's from the Futuristic Tiles pack. And that pack has some really nice car graphics, so that's one of those I'm going to use for this tutorial. And, uh, and if you notice here, like in the beginning, I've set it up that the player starts there by the door and the car graphic is this one square that's selected uh, so we're pretending as if the player is going to get into a car although you can really set it up in any way you want you can make it as part of a cutscene that's that's running on the auto run or you can simply make it as a direct interaction with the car will cause you to get into it so this is the eventing for the car which you're gonna drive and uh, it consists of two pages the first page here, uh, let's look, I know it looks really complicated from here, but don't worry, so long as you understand each of the steps, it's not too bad. If we look on the left hand side, where it's got various features, so first of all we've got our graphic, our car graphic, and uh, make sure that all the other stuff is fine, it's, uh, it's fixed and everything, it's same as characters, it triggers action button, and for the options, make sure you have direction fix on, because you actually want the car to always be facing the same direction, even if you because you know when you interact with an event, the event turns towards you and you don't want the car, an empty car to turn towards you, you want it to be direction fixed. Now, this is a harder part, the contents part of it. This is what we're going to do. First of all, you should fade out the screen. It's a good idea to just fade out the screen and let yourself set it all up before you fade it back in again. So here's the basic thing. So you play a sound effect to open the car door. It's up to you whichever sound effect you want to do. Just something that sounds like players opening a car door. And then uh, these other things. So if you got, if if in your game you've got followers, you might want to disable them. If you don't have followers, you don't have to do this part. So change followers off. Uh, you also want to disable the menu access or any kind of saving of the game and formation, this kind of stuff, because you don't want the player to be, you know, going into the main menu, healing themselves and saving the game whilst in the middle of an intense car chase scene. So that's something you want to disable for the duration of the scene. The next thing also you should do is to change the actor graphic. And you can either change it as an actor graphic or change it as a player graphic. It doesn't matter really too much which one you do. The only thing to keep in mind, if you're changing the player graphic, then you should definitely disable the player from um, changing the formation. Because if they change the formation, it'll it's going to mess it up. And uh, with the actor graphic as well, you actually want to... If you're setting it as an actor graphic, you might as well want to even change every single actor into graphic into a car, like here. So if you do it to each of them, r right now we only got one um, character here, so we're just gonna put him, but if you got several, and there's a chance that the player might have someone else at the front, then you wanna set all of them to a car. Then we're gonna pull a switch, we just call it car entered. So you're gonna switch, get a switch on, and with this switch, before I'm gonna go to the next part, I'm gonna show the second page of the car graphic, where which shows that the car has disappeared. And that only happens once this switch has activated. So upon interacting with the car, this switch is going to activate and the car is going to disappear because it's no longer going to be a separate event, you're going to be the car. And also make sure to set it on through, down at the bottom in the options, set it on through so that you can actually go through it without it being like, like a block on your way. Now if we go back to the contents again, as soon as this switch is going to pull, the, the car is actually going to be calm, the second page, but the event is going to still continue till the end of these contents here. So the next thing we're going to do is set the move route to the player. So now the player has become a car, so you need to get the player into the position where the car was. 
So we've done here, if you notice, move down and turn to the right. Make sure it's the place facing the same direction the car was facing. And the other thing we've done is that we changed the speed because once the player gets into a car, he's obviously going to be faster. So we've changed the speed. The default speed is speed 4, which is normal. Speed 5 is 2 times faster. So you, you can set it to 4 times faster if you want to, but 2 times faster I think is reasonable for a car. After that, you basically play some more sound effect if you want to close the car door and stuff like that. Make sure you actually put a bit of a wait command there, because um, if you don't put the wait command, all these things you see here, they're actually going to pretty much happen at the same time. So if you don't put the wait command, the, the close uh, sound is going to play at the same time as the open sound, and that's going to be messy. So you might want to put a wait command. In fact, always use wait command in your cutscenes, because it makes the floor more natural. Because the characters don't do everything instantaneously. They pause, they look around, you know, this kind of stuff. So it's good to have pauses, like with the wait command. And the wait command, 60 frames equals to 1 second. So if you see here, it's not long. It's only half a second gap between the open and the close. And also another thing I've done is we set the BGM. So as soon as the player gets into a car, you're going to have a groovy music playing, the car chase music playing. Here I just select one of the RTP tracks. And then once all, all done, you fade in the screen. So the player is going to get into a car. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Here's a little preview. So now we've become a car. You can drive around like this. Perfect. What's left now is to set some enemies. So let's put the enemies on there. Now this is what we're going to do with the enemies. And uh, the enemies will vary. Obviously some of them will hit you and damage you. Whilst others, they will just simply be like destructible objects, like or like like you saw in my game's preview, like troopers, which when you hit them, they just get squished and just a blood patch is left on the on the road afterwards. So, uh, so I'm gonna go through both types of enemies here. So the first one is, let's say we've got enemy cars, the enemies which will damage you when they hit you, and this is uh, once again it's t uh, two pages I've done. This first page of the event. So we've got an enemy car graphic here, and uh, if you notice at the at the bottom. We've got autonomous movement, so we set it on approach because we want them to actually be going towards the player at all times. And uh, we also made it speed two times faster. It doesn't matter what speed, it's up to you really, it depends on your game, what speed you set it at. Generally, I think it's good to have a speed equal to the one you've set the player speed so that the enemy has a sporting chance of even doing something to you. And the trigger, we set it on event touch. Because here's the thing, you, you could put it on player touch as well, but event touch is better because event touch will make sure that even if the player is stationary and event is coming uh, into contact with you it's still gonna happen like the event is gonna take place regardless if the player is moving or not and uh, in the contents this we've got we've got pretty straightforward stuff so playing the sound effect of something smashing into something else so you're gonna hear the breaking sound we've got the screen is gonna flash with a slightly reddish color for just really briefly if you see 25 frames I only said that too it's gonna be a really brief flash we're going to change the HP of the player, the, so the player is going to lose some health. It's up to you how much you set it, just make sure it's reasonable. I mean, if you set it as instant death, it's going to be really frustrating for the player, so make it reasonable. And also when you set it, make sure you take the box that says allow knockout, because if you don't take that box, it means the enemy, no matter how many times they're going to damage you, the player's health will, will never actually drop below 1 HP. So basically it will make the game pointless, because the player can never lose it. And uh, the last thing we've done is that if this, these three are the only things you've done, the enemy will just be, keep hitting you repeatedly and you'll be stuck. So one of the good things to do is actually to make the enemy sort of bounce off the player for a bit. And what we've done here is that we set the enemy's movement. We set it on the skip and we've unticked wait because we don't want the player to have to wait for the enemy in case the enemy hits something else, another obstacle. So we actually want to put skip command there. So we have to take the skip box. And uh, what we've done here is, that if you notice, we're actually... There's three main things to consider here. First of all, we've put... We made the enemy move away from the player. So you can do it for as many spaces as you want. We've just done move away by one space, really. Another thing we've done is that, if you notice, we've changed the enemy's speed at the beginning and at the end. So that make it mo look more natural. It looks like they actually did bounce off you as opposed to actually moving away from you. So we changed their speed on the maximum, speed 6, which is four times as fast, just before they move away. And then we set it back onto speed 5, like the original speed. And the other thing we've done is that we've activated the switch. If you don't activate any switch, if you literally leave it, make the enemy bounce off the player, then the enemy is just going to stay there and that's it. Because what happens is that 
this movement that you said the enemy had is going to overwrite the initial approach movement that the enemy had and afterwards nothing else is going to happen. So what we're going to do, what we've done is we've actually created a second page. We'll activate the second switch and if you notice here, the second page, if you notice, is actually pretty much identical to the first page. There are only two differences here. First difference is that this page is going to activate once that switch is, is on. If you notice, switch 2, like in the previous picture we had switch 2 activated, so switch 2. This page is only going to activate once the switch is active. And on the right hand side, if you notice back on where we set the enemy move route for the bouncing off, we're actually going to switch that off and it's going to go back to the first page again. Actually, it probably would have been better to use a self switch for this um, rather than an actual switch. The only thing is if you use a self switch, you won't be able to put it in a move route, you'll actually have to put it as an external function. But uh, either way can work fine, it doesn't matter. But what's going to happen here, because we've done two pages, what's going to happen is that the enemy is going to keep alternating between the two pages. So it starts off as a first page. As soon as it hits the player once, it's going to go into the second page and it's going to continue moving. And once it hits the player the second time, it's going to go back to the first page. So this way it keeps alternating between the two pages and hence it will never stop attacking you. Now for the destructible enemies or squishy people or civilians, any kind of thing you want, depending on how sadistic you want to make your game, this is actually much easier to set up. All you do is that, if you notice we've selected the graphic here, once again they're going to approach or you can set their autonomous movement to whatever you want, you can make them run around crazily out of panic. You set their trigger on event touch once again, uh, or you can set it at player touch if you want because if you don't want them to literally run into the player and get squished in the process while the player is stationary, you can put on player touch. But um, if you don't, then you're just going to be pointlessly running around the player. So it's up to you, whichever you want to do, player touch or event touch. And in the contents, it's quite easy. All we've done is that we've played the sound effect of a gut-wrenching sound, of something getting squished, and we've activated the self-switch. And if you look, it's also got a second page. The second page of this event is that of a blood graphic here. And this page is going to activate only once the self-switch is active. If you notice, we've got self-switch, A is on. So this is only going to activate once the first page has been activated and uh, another thing to note if you look at the bottom we've put priority on to below the characters this time because we wanted to actually so we want the player to be able to be on top of it as opposed to on the same level and in the options we've put it on through because we don't want it to be like a block we want the player to be able to go through it so that's a squishable person I'll show you here preview once we've added a few of them into the game here we go Notice how with the enemy cars in this one were a little bit too aggressive actually. That's because uh, if you remember we said them uh, when they, we made them bounce off we only made them move away from the player by one, by one tile. So if you want to make them less aggressive you can make them move away by two tiles or you can make them move away and then wait for, for a little while like a wait command. So it's up to you, you can really manage it and uh, decide how aggressive you want the enemy to be. Right, another thing also, if you know how the events work in RPG Maker VXAs is that they would they would activate as soon as you actually come within within the screen once they actually enter the screen they will actually start going towards you but what if you wanted to make the enemy work on a on a proximity basis so maybe you want the enemy to stay stationary until you the player comes within certain distance of them and only then they're gonna aggro towards you so to do that you just simply have to activate them with a the switch and I will show you this how to do it here as well this is the plan of our map here, and if you notice I've done like a like a line of events here, like across the road, because we, we don't want the player to be able to miss them, so we literally just copied the one on the same event. And I'll show you what's inside the event. Inside the event it's quite simple. It's triggered on player touch, so it's going to trigger as soon as the player just like passes over it. And we set on through as well, it's a good idea to set on through, because if you don't set on through, then the enemies, they won't be able to actually go across it it will be like a block to them. So you should put it on through. And in the contents, all you've got to do is that you've activated the switch. Just, we picked switch 4 and we called it Cars Aggro. So that's all that happens. That's all you need to know about these. Events. And then you've got to set this aggro in the actual, with the actual enemies. So if we go back to the enemy graphics, if you remember the enemies, remember we had two pages. Well now we're going to have another page, but we're going to put that page as number one. So the enemy is going to start on this page and if you notice we've set the autonomous movement on fixed and there's nothing in the contents because they're not going to hit us they're not doing anything they're just literally stationary just standing there that's how they're going to start off 
whilst the other two pages, we actually transferred them onto pages two and three. So if you look back, something that used to be page one is now page two. See how it's all okay? here? With the only exception that now this page is going to get activated once that switch that we've we've had, the cars aggro switch, is going to activate. And the same with page three. If you notice, page three is now going to activate by two switches. If you remember, it already had one switch, and now it's going to have a car ag cars aggro switch as well. Everything else stays the same. So now the enemies are going to stay stationary until you cross that line of events, and only then they're going to go towards you. Let me show you how it looks like, and uh, I haven't said that onto the people, but I've said that on the two enemy cars, so you'll see the difference. The people will go straight away from me, whilst the enemy cars will wait. And here it is. See the people are coming, because I haven't crossed the line, and we're having an easy time killing, squishing all these people. And now, there we go, as soon as we cross the line, these guys are now going after us. So that's like a proximity, proximity style enemy. Alright, and finally let's cover uh, getting out of the car. Getting out of the car is actually pretty similar to getting into the car. You're just going to have like a chain of events that all happen at the same time. But let's say we've got it here on the map, which is, this is where our starting position is at the top, if you remember. At the bottom, see where that circle is? At the same point, that's where we're going to get to, and that's where the player is going to get off the car. So this is like our waypoint, think of that. And this is how I've, I've evented the, the waypoint. So I've chosen a graphic, you can choose whichever graphic you want. I've set it on through so that the player can actually go through it. You notice also I've given the stepping animation because I so that it's actually going to be animated. It's not just going to be a plain circle standing still. I set priority above the character so that it doesn't disturb us or anything. It's just going to be floating at the top. And the trigger player touch because you want it to happen as soon as the player comes into contact with it. And here's in, in the contents. If you notice, quite similar stuff to the getting into a car. We fade out the screen again. We fade out the BGM, the background music. You can actually, sometimes might be a good idea to put the BGM before you fade out the screen, depending how it works for your scene. And we're basically enabling all the other stuff back. We're enabling the menu access again, the, like save access, formation access, which, whichever you want. Don't forget to switch on the followers as well if you've got followers in your game. We're changing the actor graphics back into the original actor faces, so remember to do that. And we're, we're setting the player, so now the player it's gonna move side by side. So think of the the place where you stop the car. That's where the car is gonna end up. So the player is gonna be come out next to the car. So we've made the player move right, and we've changed his speed back as well, back to normal again. If you remember, we've increased the speed at the beginning because, so that he can go faster when inside the car. Now we've changed the speed back to normal, and we're also gonna activate a switch called we call the car exited switch five. And uh, I'll show you here so quickly the second page of this. The second page is going to activate with this switch, car exited, and the se in the second page, the waypoints are gonna actually going to turn into a car, this parked car. And once again, don't forget to set direction fix onto this so that the car doesn't actually move when you're trying to interact with it. And there's nothing else on this page, so if you go back to the first page again, you can play your sound effects, opening and closing of the car doors, and you fade in the screen. And the player is going to be standing right next to the car, and if you actually want, you can... If you want to make the car possible to re-enter the car, you can put the, the enter the car events that we had in the beginning into the second page of the event here, at the car exit, and the player will be able to re-enter the car again. Although it might require you to manage switches a bit differently here so that it doesn't give you any errors. Alright, so let's play out this getting out of the car. I'll show you here. So, we get into the car, as before. Now we're just going to quickly go down here and... There we go, come out of the car. It's all done. And uh, that would about conclude this tutorial of making car chase. If you've got any questions or any queries about it, then uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.